What's up, guys? Econ John here. Welcome back to our second part in our four-part series on endogenous growth models. In this video, we're going to continue the R&D model. Let's go. In the previous video, we discussed the R&D model of endogenous growth without capital. Now we will consider the case where we analyze the model with capital. Recall that our core equations of this model are our good producing sector equation, our R&D sector, our capital accumulation equation, where our depreciation rate is equal to zero, and our population growth equation. If we are now considering the dynamics of capital, uh, the first place to start would be with equation three. Subbing yt into equation three, we get the following. Let's see k equal to our savings rate times uh, one minus our proportion of capital, right, which is dedicated to uh, R&D, raised to the power of alpha, times one minus our proportion of labor dedicated to R&D, raised to the power of one minus alpha, and divide both sides of equation number five by kt. Use, from this, we get our instantaneous growth rate of capital, which is gk, which is equal to k dot all over k, which is equal to ck times atlt all over kt raised to the power of one minus alpha. So taking the logs of both sides of equation six, which was the last equation on the previous slide, and differentiating with respect to time, we get our growth rate of capital stock transition equation, which is equal to one minus alpha times our growth rate of technology, plus our population growth rate minus our growth rate of capital at a single point in time. So based on our equation for our uh, capital evolution equation or capital transition equation, we know that our growth rate of capital stock is always positive. Thus, our value GK is always rising if the expression of G A T plus N minus G K T, right, is positive and falling if it's negative or constant if it is equal to zero. On the next slide, we will describe this equation graphically. So this graph is pretty basic. As we can see, that our population growth rate N is, you know, the intercept of this graph. And, you know, if we're at any point below this line, right, we're going to go and tend towards it, right? Just looking at this on its own till we hit that line. And if we're above it, right, we're gonna go down till we hit that. That's all we have to know right now. And g k dot equal to zero is this line, right? That is so to say like, you know, all the possible steady states along this line. So similarly, if we wanted to der derive the growth rate for the transition equation, we would start with equation two and derive our growth rate for technological stock, right? This would be right by taking our you know R and D sector and dividing it by A. We go and we get the following. Taking logs of both sides of this equation and differentiating with respect to time, we get our technological growth rate transition equation, which is equal to beta times our growth rate of capital stock at time P plus gamma N plus theta minus one times our growth rate in technological stock. So in terms of visualizing this on a phase diagram again, right, this line is our growth rate tra transition equation for technology where it is equal to zero. And if we're on the left side of it, we're going to tend towards this line. And if we're on the right side of this line, we're going to tend towards this line. Again, this is showing all the steady points along this line. So and again, just note that gamma, negative gamma n over beta, that is our intercept. So now that we've gone over two diagrams, we're going to put them together and see how they interact. We'll examine two cases. Our first case is beta plus theta is less than one. And our second case is where beta plus theta is equal to one, but n is equal to zero. That's our population growth rate. The reason why we are so restrictive is because we cannot analyze other cases which do not satisfy these conditions because there is no equilibrium otherwise and our system is explosive, right? There's no convergence. Uh, for case one, we have a single equilibrium, but for case two, we have an infinite number of them. Let's get into it. So for case number one, where beta plus theta is less than one, right? The forces of the phase diagram and the growth rates, right? converge towards a single g of a star and g of k star right however for case number two right these two lines are actually on top of each other right and if you're below this line or above this line we're going to move towards it but 
you can't go and say that it's going to be a specific value. There's an infinite number of optimal solutions in this case. So for this last slide, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about our case number one, where beta plus theta is less than one. So there's a ton of math over here, and you're probably going to pause it. But I'm just going to make a couple of notes over here. So for step number one, we're going to start with our growth rate transition equation for capital stock. And we're going to set that equal to zero, and we're going to solve for g of k star. Our second step, right, is that we're going to take our growth rate transition equation for uh, technology, and we're going to also set it equal to zero. But this time, we're going to sub in our g of k star that we got from step number one, right? Just going through a little bit of algebra, right, we should come to this long run growth rate value, which is equal to n times beta plus gamma all over one minus beta plus gamma. So that's the second part of our series on endogenous growth models. I hope this video helps. Like and subscribe.